All right, we're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Um, thank you all for coming here as well for those of us that are joining us via webinar at home. Um, my name is Danny. I work here at Children's Hospital Medical Center. So thank you for coming to our Parenting You session tonight on your teen and body art. Just a couple quick housekeeping rules. If you need to use the restroom, they're out the store and to the left. And also, please remember to turn off your pagers and your cell phones before we get started. Um, our speaker tonight is Amy LaCroix. She is a pediatrician with UNMC Physicians. She um, has been a pediatrician here in the Omaha area for the past 15 years. She grew up in the area, so it's nice to have someone that knows the community and gives back to the community. And as all of you, she is a parent herself to um, three children, most of whom are in their teenage years. So not only can she offer you that practical clinical advice that we all love to hear so much, but she can tell you how it is as a parent as well. So without further ado, I present Amy LaCroix. Thank you. Thanks. We're a nice small group here today, so that's kind of nice. We can talk a little bit more, I think. Um, as Danny said, um, I'm Dr. Amy LaCroix. I've been working here in Omaha for 15 years as a pediatrician, and I teach adolescent health to the pediatric uh, residents and to students, medical students and nursing students, um, and a lot of other pediatricians in town, too, for that matter. Um, so that's kind of my special area of interest that I bring to this is um, I do a lot of adolescent health care and I find that adolescents are very interesting and entertaining. And one of the most interesting things um, about some of my patients is some of the art that they choose to express themselves with. Um, some of them bring their art in to show me and some of them wear their art in um, in the form of their clothes or in the form of body art. And um, body art goes by a lot of different definitions. But generally speaking, um, when people talk about body art, it is either jewelry or ink um, or scars that are put there purposefully um, on someone's body um, for different purposes. One of them is just because someone likes them. Um, they think it looks good and it looks nice. Uh, another reason that some people use body art is as a form of identification. I belong to this group and we all do this, those sorts of things. Um, and uh, so, so tattooing, piercing, probably almost everybody anymore has traditional piercing, the, the earlobes pierced. But piercing has come to mean a lot of other things, has gone all the way up the ear and around the ear and in the front of the ear, um, can also involve other parts on the face or other body parts um, anywhere in general really can be pierced. And um, branding or uh, scarification is really one of the more unusual forms of body art. Not too many people um, <laughs> uh, participate in, in branding or scarification, but it involves basically um, repeated trauma to an area in a pattern that makes um, basically a big scar or a brand that never goes away. Um, got that? Anyway, um, and that is something that's done done uh, less often, but you will see occasionally in adolescence. And, um, and lastly, we're starting to see more and more kids who are doing something called insertions. And insertions are placement of um, rods or bars under the skin. Um, so they create an effect by, by showing their impression. So often you just see an impression in the skin and there's something underneath it. So that's a little different and um, not, hasn't gotten a lot of popularity in this area yet, but I'm starting to see it more in some kids that are very unique. So, so those are the things that I'm talking about when I talk about body art. Um, and these are just some examples of different kinds of body art that people have. Um, tongue piercings have become very popular and uh, are really much more mainstream now than they were probably 15 or 20 years ago. Um, tattoos obviously can happen in any body part anywhere. The middle picture there is a picture of a brand um, that someone did on their chest. And um, ear piercings obviously, lots of different places. That particular picture of an ear piercing is um, also shows a piercing that's been stretched out and a lot more now you see people who um, bring those holes out and make them bigger and bigger to create a great big lobe effect. Um, and umbilical piercings or belly button piercings which um, are very popular and anymore for a lot of teenage girls seem to almost be a rite of passage. Um, when to go out and get my belly button pierced is, is a very common thing um, when kids get to be somewhere around 16 or so. 
a little bit of history um, about body art and, uh, and tattooing. This is something that's not new. Um, it's been around for a very long time. It's centuries old. Um, it's been described in the Bible. It was described in literature from ancient Egypt. And uh, we know that it's been around for a very, very, very long time. The tools that have been used to apply body art have changed over the years, obviously. Um, we're not using stones and um, blunt instruments anymore. But, um, but it's been around for a long time. And tattooing has been around um, for, for hundreds of years, as well as piercings. And permanent tattooing was something that the ancient Egyptians did um, for, for facial makeup, basically, too. So these are things that have been around for a long time. And um, by and large, are relatively safe. Okay. Now, that's not saying they're not without consequences, and I'm going to talk about consequences um, at some length today. But considering the length of time that these things have been done and the numbers of people who do them, there are relatively few complications. So that's, that's something to be, I think, comforted about when your kids are asking about body art. Um, Reasons for body art I talked about a little bit earlier, um, to affiliate with people. So a group of kids decides we're all going to do this together. This is our sign. We're all going to get our, our uh, nose pierced today. And this is a sign that we belong together. Um, ownership, OK? People have forgotten about this. But some body art means that, you've, that you belong to someone or that um, you know, they were used often to, to mark slaves in the past. And that's something that people have forgotten about. But it was a big reason for a lot of different kinds of uh, body markings. Um, and then just beauty and adornment. And um, a little bit about the tools over time. Um, this is a picture of what a modern tattoo machine looks like. And um, basically, um, this is a, a variation of the, auto, of the um, uh, autographic printer that Thomas Edison invented in the 1800s, in the late 1800s. And uh, it sort of works a lot like a sewing machine, basically. Um, the tattoo machine has a needle in it that moves up and down very rapidly. And um, in the hands of a tattoo artist, they, they put uh, ink on those needle points. And the needle goes up and down anywhere from 50 to 3,000 times a second. <laughs> They're very fast. And they deposit ink underneath the top layer of the skin, so into the dermis of the skin. Um, that ink is then sort of eaten by cells that live in that area. They're called macrophages. And when they take that ink up, that's a permanent stain. So that's not something that's going to come off. It's really under the top layer of the skin, and it's meant to be permanent. And that's one of the things that's really important about tattoos and talking with your kids about tattoos is this is something that is meant to be permanent. It's not coming off unless we do something really drastic. Um, so that's an important thing for, uh, for kids to realize. Um, and they're held in the hand. And that, the end of that uh, tattoo machine there is really about the size of a pen. So it's, they're, they're really handheld. They're very small, and they're easy to use. Um, a little bit of information is important about what are the rules and regulations, or are there rules and regulations about uh, body art and who can get body art. Uh, you know, does the state say that you have to be a certain age in order to get body art, um, in order to be tattooed or to be pierced? Nebraska state law, um, there, there was a revised statute that came about just a couple of years ago um, that really um, listed everything in detail as far as what the law says with regards to um, body art, which is that parental consent is absolutely necessary if someone is under 18 years old and they want to have a piercing or a tattoo um, or, or other kinds of body art that applies to that as well. Um, and this is actually a law that's under um, another law in um, sort of under the heading of cosmetology under Nebraska Health and Human Services. But um, it's, so it's important for parents to sign on the dotted line. And if parents aren't present, they're actually supposed to have like a notarized statement. Um, from parents that says that it's OK, that's been notarized. So um, parents are supposed to be there in person with their identification and sign when, when a minor gets a uh, tattoo or, or a piercing done. Um, I think it's important to remember about, about tattooing and piercing. This is an apprentice trade. This is something that um, there's, no, there's no school that people go to to learn how to do body art or how to pierce or tattoo. 
they learn how to do it by working with someone else who knows how to do it. And the longer they apprentice, the more, more credit they should have. Um, and usually the better experienced they are. But most apprenticeships last anywhere from a year to three or four years, or longer if people are interested in doing more complicated things. Um, but more than three years is pretty unusual um, for someone to apprentice. So, um, so it's an apprentice trade, and it's really very much self-regulated. Some states have laws about uh, who can and can't um, have a shop, but many people learn how to do body art, or, or many artists learn how to do their trade, and then go practice. And they may, may, may practice out of their own home or out of their own basement. Um, and a few of them have body art shops or work together in shops. Um, many shops are regulated. And you can, uh, the state of Nebraska has certain laws about having a business that provides body art and certain rules that you have to follow. And I think that that's a really good thing is to look for if, you're, if your adolescent is interested in getting a tattoo or getting a piercing, it's probably a very good idea to try and find someone who works at a shop that is approved by the state and that follows the, the OSHA guidelines and belongs to perhaps the, the Alliance of Professional Tattooists or um, the Association of Professional Piercers. They have rules and regulations that they would like their practitioners to work by that are very specific. Um, such as um, if you are a piercer, um, you have to sterilize your instruments that you use and you should have an autoclave on the premises. And an autoclave is a big oven, basically, that you use to sterilize instruments with. Um, and so to belong to um, the Association of Professional Piercers, you have to have an autoclave there and you have to use it. Um, the same as far as the, the Alliance of Professional Tattooists, you have to have worked for three years in a permanent location. And that says something about your credibility as a tattoo artist and um, your ability to, to respond to the people that you work for um, and to be around to help them if they have problems or they have aftercare problems. So those are things that you can look for um, in an artist to make sure that you feel like they're very competent, they've been around for a while, they know what they're doing, um, and they're going to take care of you. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention was that uh, a, a lot of these associations also have requirements about knowing first aid, um, having a first aid kit around, um, and a lot of things about disposal of safe disposal of, of blood products and needles and things like that um, that are really important. Let's see. Um, so what are the benefits of getting, of getting a tattoo or getting a piercing? Um, I think that you have to really look at benefits and risks when you're talking about doing anything that might affect your health. Um, and the benefits for adolescents of getting uh, any kind of body art have to do with um, improving their own self-identity. Forming your own self-identity is a really important thing during adolescence. And um, figuring out who you are and where you belong is, is one of the major tasks of sort of getting through adolescence and becoming an adult. And for some people, that means dressing differently. For some, it means dressing the same. For others, it means wearing jewelry or belonging to a group or playing sports. And for some adolescents, it means, this is, I really like this. I want to get this piercing or I want to get this tattoo because it says something about me and who I am that I want everybody to know. Um, so it can be something that is um, very reinforcing for some adolescents and makes them feel more in control of themselves. Um, it's not something that should be done rashly. Um, this is not, you know, it's, you have pictures, I think people picture in their mind from uh, movies 40 or 50 years ago, guys all in the, in the Navy going out and, and drinking a lot and then getting tattoos done. <laughs> and in some cases that happens, but it, it shouldn't. It's something that should be thought about for a long time um, and planned carefully. Um, I think that when it's done that way, it's a really, it can be a really good thing for an adolescent. If it's done very rashly and without much thought, it can end up being a nightmare because you don't want to carry something with you um, for the rest of your life that you acted on very quickly. Um, part of being part of a group, um, some body art identifies people as being part of a group. Now this can be a positive or a negative thing. It can be a good thing or a bad thing. The good parts, um, 
if you all go out and decide as a group that you're going to get a little star tattooed on your arm, um, that's something that some girls have gone back to or, or guys have gone back to their whole life as showing that they're a part of something and it makes them feel good about themselves. Obviously, there are, there are markings and tattoos associated with gangs, too. And those are things that can be very, a uh, very bad long-term thing for people because they are difficult to remove. They associate with you, a, you with a group that you may not always want to be associated with. Um, so um, for that reason, a lot of tattoo artists will not use certain colors when they do tattoos. So if there's a color that's a strongly associated with a gang and someone says, I want this tattoo all in this color, um, there are some tattoo artists who will say, I won't do that for you. Um, and I think those are very responsible people. I've known, I've known over the years, I've gotten to be friends with a couple of tattoo artists, and some of them are very responsible about what they will do and where they will do it. Um, but that's, uh, that's something that you have to do very cautiously. So some of, those, some of those piercings or tattooings that make you feel like you're part of a group can be a really good thing, and some of them not so good, obviously. Um, Self-satisfaction. Um, some people feel really good about themselves when they get a piercing or a tattoo. They may not like their hair. They may not like the way their body looks. They may be happy or unhappy with their weight, but they really like that piercing that they got. Um, it makes them feel good about themselves. It makes them feel that people look at them um, and, and notice them in a way that they like. Um, so whereas you may not feel a lot of comfort with other parts of how you look. That may be something that you really like and that can be a really positive reinforcer for you. So there are some good things about getting body art beyond, and, and when I talk about body art, I'm talking about beyond the regular ear piercing thing, which has really come to be an everyday thing. So after talking a little bit about the benefits of getting body art, we should switch over and talk a little bit about some of the risks. All right, and, and I'm going to address um, tattoos and um, piercings a little bit differently because they are different, but they share some of the same risks too. Um, with tattoos, um, probably the first thing is um, obviously when you get a tattoo, you're going to bleed. All right, and if you have a bleeding disorder, you shouldn't be getting tattoos. That's not a good thing. Um, a tattoo is basically um, an abrasion of the skin. So when you think about um, riding a bike and falling down and skinning your knees or skinning your hands, um, when you put these holes in that, create, that leave the ink behind, you create a big abrasion. Um, and it does bleed for a little bit. So that's important for people to know. Um, and when it puts that dye into your skin, if you happen to be an unfortunate person who is allergic to that dye, you could have a lovely allergic reaction locally to that dye. It's, it's incredibly rare to have someone have a really bad allergic reaction that involves difficulty breathing. But there are some people who really have bad local allergic reactions. Um, you can get infections um, from getting tattoos as well. And those infections can be infections from the normal bacteria that live on your skin getting involved in your skin. So those are things like um, staph and strep infections, bacterial infections that respond well to antibiotics. Um, historically, tattoos have been associated with getting viral infections like hepatitis B and C. And, um, and that was from tattoo artists reusing needles, going from person to person to person with the same needle. Um, it's much, much less common today, much more rare than it used to be. Um, but because of that association, we still think it's really important that if you're going to get tattooed, you should have hepatitis B vaccination in you. Um, there is a risk of getting HIV from reused needles, just like there is from reused needles anywhere else. Um, however, it's really a, a good thing to say there have been no known cases of HIV um, in the United States ever that were associated with getting a tattoo. Um, so that's a nice thing that I can say about that. Um, tattoos um, change with time, and that's something that it's important for, I think, anybody to think about when they get a tattoo. Um, the sunlight fa makes them fade. So if you get a beautiful, bright, colorful tattoo, um, over time, that's going to fade and look differently. And if you want it to have that fresh appearance again, you have to get it redone. Um, and some people aren't aware of that, and they think it will always look the same. So when you get a tattoo, the, um, the artist who put it there will tell you, keep it out of the sun. 
Um, and some people don't know that. And if you love the sun and you get a beautiful, bright tattoo, you're going to find that it fades pretty quickly. Um, so that's an important thing for kids to know. And um, people get tattoos placed in a number of places all over their body. And it's also important to realize that your body changes with time. And so that the tattoo that looked really good um, on your lower abdomen after you've had three babies may be really stretched out and look really funky. So, <laughs> so it's important to think about where you're going to put your tattoo and be strategic about that. Um, the, your body changes with time, and that's natural and normal. And so um, put it in a place that's going to change less, and you'll probably be happier with it over time. Um, I, I tell my patients, if you're going to put a tattoo somewhere, think about the arm or the shoulder. Um, don't necessarily go for the backside or the belly, because those places change over time, and, um, and you may not be happy with how it looks. So, um, Some people think that they really like this design, and then they get it on them and they don't like it at all. And once it's there, you can't change it. So that's another thing to be really sure that you like whatever tattoo you're getting and that um, you've seen the artist, that the artist draws it out for you before they actually put it on you. Um, most good tattoo artists should show you um, their artwork. They should have a book full of their artwork, not just tattoos, but actual artwork because they are artists. And you should be able to look at their art and get an idea for what they can and can't do. And then they can, that way they can show you the, the things that they've done. And, and if you want them to do something, you can gear it towards what they do really well. Um, and if you go to a tattoo artist and you say, this is what I want. Can you draw me out a picture? And they draw it for you and it's kind of eh. Don't go to another tattoo artist. Don't settle for that um, because you need to go to someone who can do what you want. Um, Obviously, body art is painful <laughs> to some extent. And people need to know that, it, that it's going to hurt. No, they're not going to give you any local anesthetic there. Um, they're going to clean you really well. They should clean your skin off really well to keep you from getting infected. But they're not going to give you any anesthetic. And you're not supposed to take any drugs before you go there. So you're not supposed to take um, ibuprofen or Tylenol or anything like that. And they definitely don't want you to drink alcohol before you go get a tattoo because alcohol actually kind of acts as a blood thinner and makes you bleed more. Um, so any respectable tattoo place won't put a tattoo on anybody who's been drinking um, anymore. So that's important too. Um, and they can be expensive. A little teeny tattoo might cost as little as $50. Great big tattoos with lots of color or lots of detail can be thousands of dollars. Um, some people really um, almost become addicted to getting tattoos, and they can cost a lot of money. So it's important to know um, what your limits are as far as your finances and how much you can afford before you go into the shop. Um, and lastly, stigma. And stigma applies to both tattoos and to um, uh, piercings. A lot of times people don't think about what other people are going to think about their tattoo or their piercing. Um, until later. And it's important to really spend a lot of time thinking about it. Um, because when you go in for a job interview, people do look at you differently if you have a piercing in an odd place or a tattoo in an odd place. Um, one of the things that can be said positively for certain piercings is that they can hide well. Um, you can hide an umbilical piercing under your clothing. Um, you can hide a tongue piercing pretty well. And um, some, of the, some of the nose piercings that go through the middle of the nose can be flipped up and completely hidden, so people won't make judgments. Um, ear piercings, females can hide under their hair, but males not so easily. So it's important to realize that people do make judgments based on what you look like, and they may help you or they may not. So it's got to be something you're really comfortable with before you get it. Piercings um, have some, some of the same risks and some different risks. Um, allergies to metal are the biggest difference in piercings. You have um, a metal that's going through your skin and you better make sure that it's really hypoallergenic because if you're allergic to that metal it can cause a bad reaction locally um, and a lot of distortion of your skin. It can look like an infection and just be an allergic reaction. Um, infections with piercings happen just like they do with tattoos and actually they're probably more common with piercings than with, they're definitely, than with tattoos. Um, it's, it's estimated that somewhere between 5 and 10 percent of piercings get infected at some point, and that may be initially or it may be later on. Um, and 
infection can be associated with the initial piercing pro process or just with the cleaning that you're doing because if you take dirty hands and you go to rotate a piercing and clean it, then you're bringing infection up to that area. So, um, so that's a big risk with, with any kind of piercing. Um, migration. Um, piercings, the body's natural reaction to a foreign body inside of it is to try and get rid of it. Um, so if you've ever noticed if someone gets a sliver, their body will push that sliver out eventually most of the time. Well, sometimes the body reacts to piercings the same way and tries to get rid of it. And if that happens, you're just out of luck. Um, that's why it's really important to go to a professional piercer because if you um, go to someone who doesn't really know what they, they're doing and they just barely get something in under the top layer of skin um, and they don't put it in the right way, you're much more likely to reject it and be left with just sort of a funky little opening in your skin than if you go to someone who knows what they're doing and gets it in the way it's supposed to be gotten in, under, really under the dermis. Um, disruption of normal body function. Um, that has to do more with where specifically you put your piercings, all right? I didn't focus a lot today on piercings besides face and body, but genital piercings can interrupt with um, sexual function. Um, breast piercings sometimes can, can mess with lactation if you want to breastfeed your baby. Um, not Most of the time they don't, but sometimes they can. Um, and, um, and you have to remember that any uh, any piercings that you do inside your mouth are going to clunk into your teeth if you're not careful. Um, they have to be removed if you go to the dentist or if you have surgery where you need anesthesia. Um, it's important to remove them. Um, and if someone is really an allergic individual, I would not recommend that they get piercings around their eyes or their nose because if you're blowing your nose all the time or you're rubbing your eyes or your nose because you're itchy and allergic, um, you're going to those are more likely to get infected. And so that's probably not a very good idea. So you have to think about the individual person and what their risks are too. Um, oral piercings, um, uh, you can aspirate too. Um, if, if you're not, if they are loose, you can get them in the airway and that's not a good thing. Um, and initially, especially, people will notice their speech is different if they get a tongue piercing or an oral piercing. That should get better with time, but for some people it never really changes, so it's a risk and you have to decide if that's a risk you're willing to take. Um, embedding. One of the reasons that I got interested in body art was um, after taking out earrings that have, had been uh, pulled through the ear the wrong way and become embedded in the ear. Um, if, you, if your earring just gets pulled through the wrong way, either the stud in the front or the little butterfly in the back can get stuck inside the ear. And that can be a very difficult thing to get rid of. So, so um, piercings can get embedded and be really difficult to remove. I had one patient come in to see me after hers had been in for about a year and a half because she was so afraid to get it taken care of and it had completely closed over it and basically we had to do a little minor surgery on her ear to get her little earring post out. So, um, so that can be a big deal sometimes. Um, so it's important you always keep track of those earrings and you make sure they're in the way they're supposed to. Um, interference with imaging. Um, if you wear a, if you have a metal piercing on, you have to take it out before you go into a CT scanner or it causes sort of dispersion or dispersion of the x-ray image everywhere and you get a horrible picture. Um, likewise, there are some dyes that have enough metal in them that they interfere with MRI testing. Um, so some, although you can do MRIs on people with tattoos, there are some tattoos that will interfere with those images. That's just something to be aware of um, if you have to have those kind of tests done. Um, uh, and we talked a little bit about pain and expense and, and stigma already. Um, keloids is another thing that's important. If you're a keloid former, um, boy, um, I'd be reluctant to get any um, tattoos or piercing done. And keloids are big scars that people get with cuts. They're much more common in darker skinned people and, and African Americans and Africans. Um, but um, if you form keloids, then you, you probably want to stay away from piercings because you're going to end up with a big keloid. Um, infections. Infections are much more common in piercings. They're much more common at the belly button. Um, and the reason for that is when you, when you pierce your belly button, all your pants ride there. Um, so you're supposed to not wear anything constrictive 
around a piercing, but it's difficult to do that. I don't know too many teenagers who wear nothing over that area. <laughs> There's almost always something there now. And today, it's a little easier than 10 years ago when pants were up higher. Today, pants are down lower, so they stay away from that area. But it's really hard to keep that area from rubbing, and so it gets irritated more often, and it gets infected more often. So belly button piercings are probably the, uh, the most commonly infected piercings. Um, when, when a piercing becomes infected, it's important to not remove the jewelry in it, if you can at all possibly not remove it. Because the jewelry that, that provides a, uh, a way out for the infection, if that's in place, there's a drainage hole there, there's a drainage system there. And when, with skin infections, being able to drain is really important. So infections need to be kept clean um, and soaked regularly, and you probably need to take antibiotics but you, you should leave the jewelry in while you're getting it fixed, while the infection is clearing, to leave a place to drain. And if you take the jewelry out, you should put something else in, in its place really fast to keep that hole open so that in, the infection can get out and drain. Um, and the treatment depends sort of on what's infected. Um, ears, and or, or some piercings tend to get the, the stuff that live on your skin, which is bacteria called staph or strep. But upper ears especially tend to get something called pseudomonas, which requires a completely different kind of medicine to treat than, than plain old staph or strep. So it sort of depends on where the piercing is, what you get treated with as far as the infection. Um, but most infections are very local. Um, I want to see if I have a... Uh, Bacterial infections, um, with tattooing, I talked about staph and strep, with piercing, pseudomonas, and ears. Um, and, and I think it's important to remember that tetanus is still out there. So it's really important to have your tetanus immunizations up to date if you're getting pierced or tattooed. Um, tetanus spores are everywhere, and um, tattooing and piercing put you at risk for getting it. So it's important that those immunizations are up to date too. Um, we talked a little bit already about viral infections like hepatitis B and C and HIV. Um, People with impaired immune systems are at risk for a whole bunch of other infections. So those, if you, you know, if you have children or you know anyone with children who have problems with their immune system, these are patients that are at much higher risk for getting infections from doing uh, piercings or tattooings. And I think that they need to be extra cautious. Also, um, children who are born with problems with their heart or congenital heart disease are at risk for something called endocarditis. And getting a piercing is also a risk for endocarditis. So those kids need to be treated differently. And I have some patients who have heart conditions who have gone on and wanted piercings and tattoos. And um, some people recommend that they get antibiotics before they get their piercing or their tattoo as just sort of assurance to make sure that you've done everything you can to prevent them from getting infection. Because um, those are really serious types of infections. There are some other alternatives to sort of permanent body modification, too, that, that I think everybody should consider if they're thinking about getting a tattoo. Um, henna, is, henna tattoos are semi-permanent. Um, they go away with time, so they stay for months. Um, they'll stay in place. But um, it's a dye that's put really on the skin more superficially and wears off with time, but stays for a long time. So getting a henna tattoo is a really good idea for someone who thinks they might want a tattoo, but they're not sure really. Because if you decide after three or four months, or if you decide after a week, eh, you know, I don't like having that there every day, then you know you're not going to get a, a real tattoo because then it, that would be permanent. So a henna tattoo is kind of a nice thing to do if you're wondering if you would like a tattoo. Um, and they're much less permanent. Um, a lot of uh, people who are interested in doing ear things, they make some really cool ear bands that don't involve piercing. So I tell my patients, if you don't like pain, um, but you want to do something with your ear, go shopping for ear bands um, because they make some really cool ones that go around your ear, um, around the, the pinna of your ear, that don't involve going through your ear, but they look like it. They look like they go right through your ear. So they can be really impressive in, in how they look. Um, one, of the, one of the sayings that a lot of um, the tattoo artists have themselves, too, is, and people who are tattooed, is think before you ink. Um, think about where you want it. Think about whether you, you're going to accept it there for the rest of your life. Think about what you want put on. Um, most responsible 
um, tattoo artists will not put names on people unless it's their own name or like mom. Um, they won't, you know, if they're, if they're responsible, they aren't going to put a boyfriend or a girlfriend's name on you or even a husband or wife's name on because they are realists and they know that relationships change and to be tattooed permanently with someone's name um, might not be the best thing for you. So that's something to think about and especially putting a name other than someone's own name on a minor um, would probably not be a very good idea just because relationships change so much. Um, when you're young. Um, prevention, as far as what can you do to make sure that what you're doing is healthy. Um, the immunizations I talked about, you have to make sure your tetanus immunizations are up to date and your hepatitis B immunizations are up to date. Um, every, um, every place that, does, that provides body art, so uh, tattoo shops and other body art shops that do piercings, should give you aftercare instructions for your new body art. They should give you printed paperwork that says this is what you should do to keep this area clean and to take care of it. Um, and uh, if they can't show you their, their aftercare instructions, um, I tell people walk out the door because that means they don't care what happens to you after you walk out of their shop. Um, and they should tell you also if something happens or you're worried about it, come back and see me because they should have you see them before you go see someone else. I mean, and they can tell you, oh, that's normal, or no, you need to go see your doctor because that looks infected. Because a lot of people think when they get a piercing and it gets red and swollen afterwards that it's infected, when that's the normal body reaction to being injured. Um, so it's important that, that you go somewhere where they say, come back, we'll help you if you have problems. Um, healing can take a short amount of time or a very long amount of time, depending on what you're doing. Um, most tattoos um, will go, go through a phase in the first week where they look pretty red and awful because they're abrasions and they take time to heal. Um, but by the time they hit about two or three weeks, they're looking pretty good usually. Um, you really don't want tattoos to get a scab. And if they get a scab, you don't want to pick it off because that is, will, will interfere with how the tattoo looks. Um, for, for simple things, just a few weeks heal. For complicated piercings, um, it can take months to even a year or more for them to really completely heal and, and be a nice, clean tract. Um, and that includes um, umbilical piercings or belly button piercings. Those can take months to really heal well, six months to a year sometimes. So you really have to be careful of those and keep them clean and um, not irritate them for a long time. Um, any kind of genital piercing tends to take a lot longer um, to heal as well. So if people are interested in getting any genital piercings, those take longer to heal just because they're in an area that is sort of considered dirty. Um, you have a lot of body fluids that are down there and messing with things, and they can get dirty easier. Um, and they rub on your clothes all the time, too. So those are, that's something to say about those. Um, care, body art care. For piercings, um, what most places will tell you when you first get a new pier piercing is that you should clean it twice daily, wash your hands, and use HibiCleanse, which is what we use to clean people off before they have surgery. It's a really good cleanser, and it really is a, is a good antibacterial. Um, and to, to rotate your piercing to keep the whole patent. Um, they don't like it when you use peroxide because that irritates the area a lot, so people shouldn't use peroxide anymore. Um, keeping constrictive clothing away from the site. And then for oral piercings, they will have you rinse your mouth and use mouthwash several times a day for, for several weeks till they know that that's really well healed too. Um, as far as tattoos go, um, when you get a new tattoo, they usually have you take the bandage off after a couple of hours and moisturize. And you wash it once a day with gentle soap and water, and then you put an emollient on that's something like um, Aquaphor or uh, or KY or Vaseline um, to really keep that area moist and fresh and what you and that's to keep it from scabbing over um, because if you scab it over you're less likely to get the result that you want. Piercings. Um, one of the things that I think is really important to know about piercings for people in general is that um, we see a lot of piercings done at the mall with the little gun thing and the best way to do a piercing, that's okay for your earlobe, 
your earlobe is pretty um, hardy and it can take a lot of abuse. Um, but basically when, those, when you get yourself pierced with a gun, it, puts, it pushes a blunt object through your earlobe. Um, it's not sharp, it's not, a, it's not a cutting edge. And so it's very traumatic. To use those on anything but an earlobe would be, is, is just a bad idea. So if you're gonna get piercings done anywhere where there's cartilage, you should go to a piercer um, because they're gonna use a cutting needle that's gonna go through and cause much less trauma and it's much, much less likely to become infected or have complications because of that. So that's, that's an important thing to know. Um, metals that, that are part of your piercing product that you buy. So aside from the cost of actually getting the piercing, you ha also have a cost of getting whatever you're gonna put in there. <laughs> um, and inert metals are the safest things to get put in those holes. Gold is at the bottom of the list because gold has other things in it. Um, so, um, and silver shouldn't be anywhere on the list because silver has all sorts of things in it, especially nickel, which a lot of people are really allergic to. Um, but surgical grade stainless steel are what a lot of piercers use these days. Um, it's cheap um, and it, it causes very little in terms of reactions. Um, and then there are more expensive things like titanium, um, niobium, and, and now Teflon. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and now Teflon, and, um, and those are really inert and don't cause m m much in the line of reactions. So. Um, and then, what about the shop? So if you're, if you're taking your kid out and they say, okay, um, I would really like um, to get my, uh, my lip pierced. Let's go looking at places. Um, I'm not going to tell you where to go and where not to go in town. I think there are a lot of good places that have a lot of high standards for, for doing body art here in town. Um, but there are questions that you should think about and that you should ask, and we've talked about some of them. Um, do they have an autoclave? Um, and, and any piercing shop should have an autoclave. Um, is everybody in the shop who's doing stuff wearing gloves? Um, that's an important key to are they good at practicing safe hygiene? Um, what you should watch them if they're doing a tattoo they should be opening their ink fresh in front of you um, and not reusing ink from someone else um, do they open their needles from sterile packages when you go there and if you see things that you don't like get up and leave um, until you've had until they've actually started doing something it's okay to get up and leave and say i don't want to do this um, do they have lots of artwork to show you and you know did they have something that is similar to what you want that they could show you um, and um, as far as getting a first tattoo, um, I really encourage people to do something small um, because you don't want to start with something big and in an obvious place. Um, many tattoo artists also will not put a tat your first tattoo anywhere in, on skin that's showing. Um, they won't put it, you know, they'll, they'll put it somewhere that you can hide under clothes, but they won't put it on a neck, they won't put it on your hands or on a face, um, they want it somewhere where you can cover until you're comfortable with it. And that's a smart thing to do. Um, and, uh, and like I said, no names other than your own or maybe mom. Um, removal of piercings is pretty simple. Um, for most piercings, you take them out and you leave them alone and your skin grows back together. Um, there are some piercings that, that just never go away. Um, and people need to know too that if you stretch a piercing out big enough, it's never going to go back to looking normal. So if you use those dilators in your ears to, to make your earlobes get bigger and bigger and bigger, if you take them out, they're not going to go back to normal. And if you ever want your ears to look normal again, you're going to have to have cosmetic surgery. Um, tattoos are different. Tattoos and removing them um, is a very difficult process. It can be done. Um, for most tattoos can be removed. Some can never be really completely removed. Um, and the alternative to, uh, and you, how do you remove them? You go to a, a dermatologist and they use laser therapy to remove them. And it sometimes is, can be done in as little as one visit, but sometimes will take many visits over several weeks um, to get them removed. Um, the getting a tattoo removed can run from 500 to many thousands of dollars, depending on what what is used to remove them and how big the tattoo is. Um, it may not be possible. So some people, if they have a tattoo and they don't like it after a while, what they'll have done is they'll have it um, tattooed over with a different tattoo or a different design. 
Um, and I know several people who have had names tattooed who have done that. They've had something tattooed over the name after their relationship changed. Um, and, uh, uh, and it just may not be possible to completely remove some tattoos. So that's, that's important for people to remember. Um, and then I, I put a few resources um, on, the, on the list. These are um, websites that have good information um, for parents on body art, um, if you have any interest in reading a little bit more about it. And uh, the first, I think the first three references on the list were from, uh, are specifically directed towards health concerns and parents. The last one is a little bit more of a detailed article um, about tattooing and piercing, but it's very up to date. So um, I thought that I'd put it on there because I think it's a really good reference. And I think that, that about wraps it up for me. So um, if you have any questions or comments um, or observations, um, I'd be glad to to answer them for you, or do the best that I can to answer them for you. But, but that's about all I have to say today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Should any of you have teenagers? I do. Do you? Yes, and he's found and determined he's getting tattooed this summer. Uh huh. So. Well, you know, I think that um, if if there's a lot of determination to get by your one of the first things that is really important is that. Um, you make it very clear that you don't want them to do it themselves or have a friend do it. Um, a lot of kids will try to do body art themselves, or especially with piercings, not as much with tattoos. Or they'll find someone who does tattoos out of their garage, um, and they'll do it cheaper. Um, and I would, you know, I, I try to encourage people away from that because I think their the quality control is not nearly as good if you're going to someone's garage um, and they're and they're doing it out of their garage and. Well, yeah. So um, I'm, I'm trying to find reasons to deter him. Yeah. Um, you know, his it, father is mm -hmm. apparently going to sign for him. So I'm, I'm trying to get as much information and knowledge okay. so that he makes wise decisions. Yeah, and absolutely. Like you said, if he's going to live with it and if he's down and determined he's going to do it, he's going to make a right. good decision. There are, and you know, I, I think that. Um, People have strong responses one way or the other to, to a lot of body art. And if you're starting out um, and you're interested in getting body art, you need to start small and you need to, like I say, do it in an area that you can cover up. If you're going to a job interview, if you're going, you know, I think that's just an important thing. Um, I have, um, there are people who I know who have body art everywhere and love it um, and are very proud of it. Um, but they have already found out who they are, um, and they are comfortable with that. Um, it's not something they went out and did you know, from, from the get-go when they were teenagers. They started out with one tattoo somewhere on an arm, and then it, it went on from there. So you want to start out slow, be conservative, um, decide on something you really, really like, and remember that it's going to be there forever. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think that this is the thing now with the teenagers and tattooing their, ba their last name across their back, mm -hmm. which is what I think he thinks he wants to do. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I really am, I mean, I'd rather he wait till he's 18, yeah. because he's only 16, and mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't think he's doing it for the right reasons. Right. Yeah, and, and there are a lot of, there are a lot of, there's a lot of conflict in families over getting these things done. Um, one of the things that I think is important is that um, you not make it so much of a conflict that they're going to go out and do it behind your back because then it's going to be worse than anything you could have had your input into. You want to keep the communication open so that you have input into it. If you say, nope, that's it, it's not going to happen, you just forget about it, um, then what you're going to have is someone's going to, he's going to come home someday and have something big and bold somewhere. Um, or, um, or, or you, you won't find out about it until he's 21 and he'll get something little and hide it somewhere. <laughs> but the, the opposite is more often true. And, and uh, I think that the other thing that you can play into this, too, with teenagers is, so you want to get this pierced, or so you want to get this tattoo. Here's what I want you to do. Show me that, you know, and I, I actually have, um, have a partner who, uh, whose daughter wanted to get her belly button pierced. And, and he said, all right. Um, this is what you need to do in school this year. 
um, and in work this year. And if you get all these things done, you go through the year, I want you to have straight A's, and I want you to not do this, no trouble, um, then at the end of the year, um, I'll take you and, and we'll get it done. Um, and she did it. Um, <laughs> and, and she had a great year, and he said, you know, she did everything I asked her to. Um, she worked hard, and she, she pulled her weight. She even she earned the money to pay for it, you know, and did the whole thing. And so he said, so I well, took her. And kind of so I it was a responsible, you know, it was a goal for her to get this much done before, before he let her do it. So. Well, and that's kind of what I told him. I told him he had to get online. He had to look at tattoos. Mm -hmm. We had to approve it. And, you know, and since then he hasn't brought it up. Yeah. So I'm hoping maybe, you know, sure. make, make him, him do the work. work. Yeah. Make, make him, him do the research. research. Find out where to go. Um, talk to the people. Talk to other people who have had it done. Well, look at what he wants. It, it does have to mean something. Yeah. It. Mm -hmm. It's got to mean something. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to have it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And um, 16 is too young. It, it is young, yeah. and uh, and again, I think that it's still it's just so important to make sure that they do it safely if they're going to do it. Um, I, I also, I've known people who just went, you know, their parents said no. Um, young lady that I know went to a friend's house and they did her belly button of all things. Um, ears are one thing, but um, she had a friend who pierced her belly button. Um, three days later, um, came up to me and said, do you think this is infected? <laughs> and I went, oh my, <laughs> yes, I think it's infected and told me about it and said, my mom doesn't know about it. Do you think we could not let her know? Um, and I said, no, I, this is a bad infection. She has to know about it. Um, and uh, so we want to avoid that if at all possible. You know, if, if you feel that, that they're going to go sneak off and get this done or that there's a possibility of that, it's much better to do it safely um, and not have that happen because those infections are bad to take care of. And, and today, too, we see um, there's this lovely bacteria out there called MRSA. Um, that a lot of people are hearing about now, it lives on all of us. Um, it's not a particularly um, difficult infection to get rid of, but you have to know about it and treat it appropriately. Um, and a lot of piercings um, are, are getting MRSA these days, just like they get other infections as well. So um, especially something that's been done in a, in a kid's bedroom um, instead of in a nice sterile studio, um, they're at risk for those kinds of problems. Well, and hepatitis B and tetanus shots, those are pretty common. If he's 16, he should He should have had them all, yeah. He should have had his three hepatitis B shots. And most kids get a tetanus booster um, when they're about 12 with their middle school vaccines. So if they're getting, usually what I tell them is if you're more than about five years out from a tetanus shot, um, and you're and you're still and you're getting piercings or tattoos. You might want to think about getting another one. Definitely, if you're or if you're over 10 years, then you need another one. So those kinds of things shouldn't be. An so that issue. should be that should not be an issue for them. Yeah. Good. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have um, a percentage for like uh, like age age 14? How many percentage of those kids get tattoos and piercings, and how many percentage of 16-year-olds get tattoos and piercings? Do you have mm -hmm. something kind of like that? Yeah, that's, that's a great, great question. question. Um, we know from, from uh, surveys of high school and college students, we have some information. And it sort of depends on the population. But as many as 50 to 60 percent of college students who are interviewed have a piercing other than ears. Um, or, or body art somewhere other than general earlobes. In the high school, at the high school level, it goes down um, and, and declines with age. Some uh, older high school kids, probably somewhere between 20 and 30 percent. And younger high school kids, it's much less, um, probably 5 to 10 percent for, for 13, 14 year olds. Um, interestingly, um, I had a little patient who came up to me one day who was four. And said, and her dad is a tattoo artist, and she came up to me for she was in for a physical, and she showed me her hand and said, "Look, I got my first tattoo," um, and she was so proud. It was a little dot that her dad <laughs> had put on her hand, and she had begged and begged him for it, um, and she was so proud of it. Um, but, um, but so we see, and I do see littler kids come in with little little tattoos or or different piercings too, including 
eye piercings and yeah, little, little teeny things that they've asked for and, and begged and pleaded for because it's a, because it's a norm in, in, within their family. Usually with little kids who are asking for that, it's because it's a norm within their family um, and they want to be a part of the family. So, wow. So, uh, so there are kids that are really little who you see with those things as well. Wouldn't that change though as they grow? Would the tattoo? Yeah, change? they can. They can change as they grow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and there are really extreme sorts of body modification that I didn't talk about today. You'll see pictures of people um, on the news who they'll say this is the lizard man who's had who've had their teeth all filed into points and had scales tattooed all over their body and um, had their their tongue split and. Those are not things most teenagers have any interest in. I mean, they, they don't want to do this to be um, freakish or outlandish. They want to do it to fit in um, so, and to be like the group that they're with or to make a statement, but not that kind of a statement. Those are things that really don't, don't apply to teenagers so much. Are tattoos becoming more and more mainstream at this point? Um, are tattoos becoming more mainstream? Absolutely. Um, I think tattoos are becoming very mainstream. Not, not wildly tattooed people, but um, it's very common to see, um, actually, um, I work with someone who, um, who got her first tattoo when she was 40 on her birthday, for her 40th birthday. Um, it's just a cute little tattoo on her ankle. Um, but, you know, she, she it was something she really wanted to do. And I don't think, you know, anybody thinks second at all about a small tattoo in a discreet place. Um, I think people still look if you have a tank top on and you have tattoos all over your arms and your chest and your back. I think that's really a, a, a stunner still. But I think a small tattoo on an ankle or a shoulder or back um, is something that most, tat most people kind of say, you know, well, yeah, that's, it's, it's, a little de it's decorate, decoration, it's cute. Um, if you go to, if you look at the media, um, they're all over the place on the media. Um, there's, there are shows on television all about tattooing. There's a, a thing about ink on one of the, one of the cable channels. Um, even just uh, looking at typical shows that a lot of adolescents watch. Friends isn't on TV anymore, but they run the reruns. They did, I think one of their shows was all about one of the characters getting a tattoo. Um, if you look at mo the movie stars, and if you look at the Academy Awards and watch the Academy Awards, you see some of the biggest movie stars that have tattoos on their hands or their back, or you know, you see um, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie um, are, are have tattoos all over, and um, they're beautiful people, and everyone identifies them as beautiful people. That takes a huge stigma off of tattoos. If a beautiful actor and actress wear tattoos that are big and bold, and you know, who's going to criticize that? So well, they're kind of addictive, though. So usually, if you get one, yeah, you know, there, there is an addictive nature to getting some of these things done. Um, it, it is. Um, we know that when people get tattooed, it it's painful, and pain produces endorphins, and endorphins are a really nice feeling. And so p there are people who really will tell you, "Oh my gosh, I just I get one, and after a while, it feels really good. It's really cool." And plus, then you get this really neat body art afterwards. Um, but it is kind of a little bit of a rush, and it can be kind of and it can be addictive on more than one level for people when they get those things. More with more with tattoos than with piercings. Um, with a little with a little tattoo, you, you're not gonna they're not gonna be working on you long enough that you're gonna get that. But if someone's tattooing your whole um, lower back or your whole arm, then then you're gonna be they're gonna be working on you for a few hours, and and you're gonna you're gonna end up with that. So. Painful process. Yes, it's uh, usually it's as painful as getting the tattoo. So, and and it is a painful process. I mean, it's not um, it's, it's not as painful as some things are, but it is a painful process to get a tattoo. It stings. Um, and uh, I tell people I have patients that the the nearest thing that I think I could probably compare it to that would be on track was um, when patients come in and I treat warts. I freeze. <laughs> There are warts, it burns like that, and, and getting a tattoo is kind of like that. It, it, it really irritates your skin, and so it stings. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, and, and obviously, 
um, the more sen some, some areas of your body are much more sensitive than others. So getting a tattoo on your shoulder isn't going to be nearly as sensitive as getting one on your lower abdomen or um, um, I think back is okay, but if you go down, some people get them on their buttocks. That's a sensitive area, <laughs> so it sort of depends. I've seen people get them on their breasts. That's a really sensitive area. So it just sort of depends where you get it, how sensitive your hands are very sensitive. So. Well, good. well, thanks a lot, guys. And very interactive audience, although we were small. That was good. <laughs>